Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Royal College of Surgeons. Uh, I'm David Ward. I'm a council member. I'm here actually standing in for our first ever female president of the college, Claire Marks, who uh, is at a conference in Australia with the Royal Australian College of Surgeons, so can't be here today, so I'm, uh, I'm afraid I'm second best. But, uh, I was actually one of her vice presidents at one stage. But I'm here particularly as chairman of what we call our Library, Museums and Archives Committee, which is one of the more important committees within the college that is responsible for looking after the museum collection as a whole. Uh, but we do also have the Hunterian Museum, which has its own separate board of trustees. The college is uh, delighted to be able to participate uh, in this symposium and to work with the universities of Oxford and uh, Leicester. By sheer coincidence, somewhere that I Leicester being somewhere that I have worked in for the last 25 years, and uh, is now, as you all know, been put very much on the map as a result of what happened last week. A lot of people didn't know like, where Leicester was. I wasn't actually sure when I was appointed to a consultant post there. Um, my wife asked me when I came back home, having been to the appointments committee, I said, oh, I've just got a job in Leicester. And she said, where's that? And I said, well, it's somewhere near Junction 21 on the M1. But uh, it's a lovely place to have been working, and uh, thank goodness Spurs didn't do very well at that match. You've got some fascinating lectures today. There are some that catch my eye as a surgeon. It's uh, invidious to pick any out, but I was particularly delighted to see that this afternoon there's going to be a talk on anatomy, something that's uh, very much true to our heart and something that we push very hard as a college to make sure that all our surgeons have a very high understanding of anatomy. And also that you've got to talk on the involvement of patients. When I first became involved in college activities 10, 15 years ago, uh, patients were present, but were not very active, or I have to say probably not very encouraged to be involved. But now they're absolutely crucial. And we, have, we have a patient's representative on every one of our committees, and uh, I've done a lot of work in exams, and they're absolutely vital uh, for examining surgeons. But anyway, on to, on to today. When you walked in just past the registration desk, I hope that you will have seen a statue at the end of the corridor underneath the dome. That is uh, John Hunter, 1728 to 1793. He was a practical surgeon and a research scientist. If you trawl through his publications, you won't find major technical advances um, or major scientific breakthroughs. That wasn't the nature of his work and why we regard him with so much esteem today. But his legacy was very much his determination to look afresh at the nature of life and general physiological processes. By the time he died, he had a school of surgery in nearby Leicester Square. He founded a museum which had over 14,000 uh, specimens. And shortly after he died, back in 1799, the UK government bought that collection because it was considered to be of such great importance and handed over the care to what was then known as the Company of Surgeons later to become the Royal College. And the care of what unfortunately remains of that Hunterian uh, collection, courtesy of the Luftwaffe, on one day in 1941. Unfortunately, those 14,000 specimens fell down to about 3,500. Uh, but that, is, that collection is still here and very much revered and looked after by the uh, Board of Hunterian Trustees which includes, apart from the good and the great, like the Speaker of the House of Commons and the First Lord of the Admiralty, it includes representatives from the University of Oxford. But in addition to the Hunterian collection, we've also got an amazing odontological collection, 10,000 
human and animal, not just teeth, but anything to do with the cranial aspects of the skeleton. We also have a collection of historic surgical instruments, including prototypes of the carbolic acid sprays from Lord Lister. I very much encourage you at lunchtime to go and visit the exhibition that is going on at the moment, Medicine and the Masses, A History of Vaccination. I hope you enjoy your day. It looks a fascinating day. Unfortunately, I won't be able to stay. I have to go and give a lecture at uh, the rival college, the Royal College of Physicians, very shortly, and run a course for undergraduates. We're trying to encourage medical students to become surgeons. So thank you very much all for coming. It's uh, wonderful to us to see so many here and to, to uh, be working with you and to see you interested in what we've got in this building. And I'll now hand over um, to Janet Shuttleworth, who's going to tell you a little bit about today and what's going on. Well, thank you very much, uh, David. And uh, I'd like to say how delighted we are to be working with the Royal College of Surgeons, and particularly the Hunterian Museum and Archives. Um, and to welcome you all here today. Uh, on behalf of the project that's uh, organised uh, this conference, which is constructing scientific communities, uh, citizen science in the 19th and 21st centuries. Um, this project uh, that I direct, I, I'm Sally Shuttleworth, I'm Professor of English Literature, which you might find a bit odd, at the uh, University of Oxford, but I've always worked across science, medicine and culture. The uh, project is funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council, and I'm delighted that we have in the audience uh, Barry Smith, who's head of the Science and Culture Strand. The idea behind the project um, was to look at the interface between the public and professional science. Start, we started in the 19th century and try to unpick the narratives that say, oh, 19th century, science all became professional and sort of basically the public was squeezed out sort of evermore. Um, and to look at the ways, in fact, that this is not true. Um, Sally Frampton, uh, who is uh, um, sitting in the front row, and also um, Alison Moles, who are both uh, working on the project, are doing excellent work um, on homeopathy, first aid, and other areas, showing how the public were very much involved in the development of science and medicine in the 19th century. In the 21st, we started off, if you're wondering the title, Citizen Science, that actually comes from the current online movement. Um, I don't know where you've seen um, the big um, online programs such as Zooniverse, which is uh, one that we're linked up with, which allows the public to actually go online and participate in the creation of science and medical research. You can even go on and uh, identify cancer cells if you're feeling in a medical mode. Or um, other projects we've run, uh, Science Gossip, where, uh, wonderfully, uh, you can go and browse the period, the 19th century periodicals in, in natural history. We've also run a project on um, orchid observers, and we have another one coming up, uh, Diagnosis London, where you'll be able to browse the pages of the Medical Officer of Health um, reports in the, in the 19th century. Now, the idea of today is that we to think about the interaction of people and, uh, and professions within the, the, the medical arena in a very broad sense. We have found working on the project that just to pose the question about um, how the um, developments today might um, be um, uh, illuminated by historical understanding and vice versa has proved that very, very productive. And so what we've decided to do today is have almost a chronological uh, run through. So we'll start in the 19th century, moving forward, but always with the same patterns of, of uh, ideas and questions uh, brought to the table. So we've uh, built in lots of question time, so we hope uh, you'll be able to participate. I should note that uh, the, the event is being filmed, but do not worry, <laughs> it's just uh, being focused on the, the figures at the front, so uh, you won't be immortalised, uh, uh, should you not wish to be. Uh, but we will, um, uh, um, question times won't be filmed, but we will film the final session. We've built in a very nice uh, lunch break, um, one and a half hours, but this will allow you to go, as uh, David suggested, to go and see the wonderful exhibition uh, that's been put on, on history of vaccination. And again, um, thanks to uh, 
uh, Alison and, uh, and, and Sally. So I do very much urge you to go and see it. Um, but if you want to also to catch five minutes in the sun, do appreciate uh, <laughs> your dedication coming on such a glorious spring day. But also at the end of the day, there will be a drinks reception, but you will also be able to go and see the, the exhibition at, at that point. So I think uh, with that, I will allow proceedings to develop.